This is Roger with Wheel Connects in Tucson, Arizona. We're selling this truck. It is a 2004 Ford F-250 crew cab long bed. Uh, this truck has low miles, 134,313 actual miles. It was a leaf street, uh, it was a, not leaf it was a new car trade to Chapman Las Vegas Dodge in Las Vegas, obviously. Um, has very low miles, it's a 6 turbo diesel, it's four wheel drive, it's an XLT which is cloth and it's FX4 off-road suspension package. Um, bought it, I saw it there, I had to have it, so I bought it. And I was right, it's a great truck. Anyway, we brought it here, we do our inspection, my guys hand me this, we send it to detail. What goodies are there? Well, the previous owner knew what he was doing. Um, he head studded it, he uh, included an aftermarket coolant filter, smart, an aluminum radiator, smart, and a can and air filter, smart. Then we had an argument. <laughs> so we see this thing and it's almost flawless, and, but there's a dent on the passenger fender. Uh, this was a source of debate, fix or not. I won with not. Um, the dent, you can see it's right here. And someone tried to push it out right here. So it's probably a little bit of a dent here and here. Um, anyway, if we put a new fender on it and paint it, it would look great except for the fact that the Ford stamp that's inside here would be gone. And then you would wonder why this the fender was replaced and you know, was it how hard was it crashed and blah, blah, blah would be the story we have to deal with. And I would rather just leave it that way. It's not a big deal. I think it looks fine. But uh, if you wanted to fix it, you might be able to find a gray uh, fender at a wrecking yard with the Ford stamp and everything slap it on or you could do it whatever you want, but uh, that's up to you. The next step with that fender is up to you, okay? I think it's no big deal, but I know one thing. Now you know what it looks like, and uh, it still has its Ford stamp, it's still the original fender, and now you know that it wasn't in some huge horrific crash. It looks like somebody leaned on it too hard or something. Pretty easy. All right. Anyway, uh, so we got a long bed. We have a work box. I don't know if we have the key for it. I do know that when we go into the hood, we'll see a ton of really expensive electronic uh, cables to the battery. So this guy had some sort of maybe an inverter set up. Who knows? Um, it does have uh, air suspension. See there, right there, got the air suspension. Um, there's a compressor under the hood, I'll point out for that. Interestingly enough, the bed looks really nice, so I don't know. I don't think he had a, a fifth wheel hitch in here. Or there are usually all kinds of dents when you have a fifth wheel. I don't see any. Um, for some reason, it would appear that they decided before they traded it in that they put a brand new set of tires on it, uh, which is absolutely doesn't do anything for you when you're trading the car in. That's a dumb idea. Don't do that. It doesn't get you any more money at the dealer at all. Um, I do notice on the window tint on this window, it's kind of bubbly and it's pretty dark. It's easy to take off. I would just take out the front windows, but we're going to leave it on because who, someone might just want it and not care. So we just do that. All right. So let's start this guy up. Glow plugs warm. 134,319 miles. God, the sun is killing me right now. All right, there you go. Go to the hood. We're gonna, we're gonna be looking for, uh, apparently the radio's on. <laughs> um, we're gonna be looking for Ford stamps on both sides. One here. They did a repro reprogramming flash here. There's another one there. Sticker where it belongs. Cannon air filter. These are those big cables. They're expensive, we'll leave them for you. Um, aluminum, uh, Radiator, obviously aftermarket pipes, which are really cool. Coolant filter right here. Ford stamp here. Ford stamp there. Here's an air compressor. This is the air compressor I would imagine for the uh, for the uh, air suspension. Maybe there's a big amp in here somewhere that's actually hooked up. This sounds pretty. That's pretty loud. All right. All right, let's see. Here is your uh, Kelly Blue Book XLT, uh, 134,000 miles. The uh, Kelly Blue Book says it's worth $14,000. This ad will not go away. It's 1402 something. Anyway, uh, here's the Carfax. There's your VIN. 
Uh, history of inspecting the vehicle's value. Basically, they blend the uh, Carfax and the uh, Kelly Blue Book together. They come up with 16,440, which seems a little bit more reasonable. It still seems like it should be worth more, worth more than that, but I don't report the news. I don't make the news, I report it. So, minor damage shows 10, 10, 15. I'll show you that in a few pages. Maybe that's the fender that they reported and probably wasn't enough to get an insurance claim, so they just left it there. Uh, no major title problems, okay? So it's in Nevada, so obviously you're not worrying about rust. You're worrying about fraudulent voting, though. <laughs> uh, let's see, damage to rear. Oh, boy. So maybe, uh, I don't know, we'll go look back there. I don't see anything. It says damage minor, so maybe they replaced the bumper. Let's see, uh, at 96,000 miles, they did diff and transfer case, service, manifold gasket replaced. Nice, that's a good one. Still in Vegas, blah, blah, blah. New guy buys it, drives it for about uh, 10 or 12,000 miles. And there he goes. So Will Kinetics purchased it here from Chapman, Las Vegas. Vehicle sold. That would be October 30th. Okay? So that's that. Seat looks good. Seat forward, back, up, down. Seat forward, down. Seat up, down. That works fine. We've got a bunch of manuals in here. Original trailer stuff. Let's see. It's a pretty truck. This is going to be very popular and go away very quickly. Be ready. If you're interested in this truck, make sure you have your uh, deposit ready because this could be uh, one of those races to the finish. Some of them take a while, some of them don't. This one is a don't. Plus, we're not trying to make as much money as we can. We don't have enough room to store cars forever. Um, as you can see, we're starting to back them up here in the middle. We're packed. So that encourages my brother to sell them even cheaper than we normally do. Windows are moving fast too, so the motors are really good. Out, in, down, up, other side, out, in, up, down. All right, let's see, tilt wheel, perfect. Seat forward, seat back, seat up, seat down, tilt up down tilt up down that all works fine time to get some air conditioning 93 degrees here in tucson november 5th my mom's birthday freaking still freaking hot and then let's see today is thursday on uh, monday it's supposed to be 60. <laughs> that is tucson uh let's see all right so you got There must be a big amp in here somewhere. Trailer brake, you got adjustable pedals up and down. Here's your. Look at there, goes the cage up. They appear to be functional and working. There you go. Um, there's that. Air's blowing ice cold. Menu. Let's see what menu says here. It's just for music. I don't think there's anything else going on here. It's a uh, Jensen VX020. So you can put an iPod into it somehow. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Tow. There's the tow on and off. Put it in neutral and go to four low. Go drive. In reverse and four low. Nice. Alright, then we're gonna go to four high. So we go from low range to four by four there. Alright. It's a little quicker in four high. In reverse. 
so four high, right? Neutral. Back to two-wheel drive. And let's try to beat all these, all these semis coming. Yeah, I don't want to be there with that. So let's get going here. All right. All right, if you come to Tucson to drive this truck home, you'll pay the following. You'll pay your state tax rate, whatever that is, plus our city tax of 2.7 and a $250 dock fee, okay? Um, if you decide to pay by wire and ship out of state, all you're gonna pay is agreed upon price. There'll be no tax, no dock fee, nothing. Once we receive full payment by wire, we will fill the title out with your name or your company's name and address, sign it off to you, scan it in your online file, and mail it to you, okay? It'll be in the mailbox before your shipper shows up. You will have the truck shipped to you. Um, you'll just take the mail, uh, the title you got from the mail, and the truck that just showed up by your shipper, and go get plates. It's very simple. Uh, if you need help with shipping, please let me know. I will uh, be glad to either do it for you, give you some phone numbers to call, or you can just do it yourself. We have a lot of customers, and truck buyers tend to know how to do this a little bit better than car buyers. So if you need help, let us know. I can roll the price of the uh, shipping into the, into the uh, price of the vehicle, uh, which might help you with a loan if you need to do that through a credit union or a bank or whatever. Um, Anyway, but don't let me know early if you need help so I can get going on the shipping and you can get your truck faster. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Deposit is $500. Once we have a deposit, we have a deal. Until then, it will stay for sale. So please make sure you get your deposit in, all right? Um, last part of every video, I've said this and uh, I should just hit a recording. I actually should have a recording. Uh, probably six or 7,000 of these videos, I say the same thing. <laughs> we don't have salesmen. We don't have bottled water with our name on it. We don't have an attendant serving scones and lattes and making sandwiches. They've got that a half a mile east of us, pointing exactly where we're going now. Uh, they've got that. You can have that. They also have really nice fountains out front and great pavement and lights and the malls next door. Very expensive rental property. And you pay for that too. So you pay for all that stuff. Uh, they also know if they sold you this truck and it broke, something broke. Uh, they would have to fix it. So they charge you an extra five to $700 for future repairs. And they almost never have to use that money, but they have it because they're not gonna spend their money, right? Um, so you have a lot bigger bill with them. They have a lot bigger nut to clear with you than we do. We have three people and we knock it out. And we knock it out by telling the truth and giving you all the proof of the truth, right? So uh, what am I saying? The day you're the owner, you're the owner. We don't. We do not write checks for future repairs or for broken stuff. A window motor decides to take a crap the day you get it, go get one. You save thousands of dollars buying from us. Um, use some of that money. Don't be bitter. Just go get it fixed. And now instead of being up three thousand dollars, you're up two thousand nine hundred seventy-two. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's what happens. Okay, um, you know. We're not Nostradamus. We don't know when these things are gonna break. We don't know, nobody knows when a vehicle's gonna break. I've seen Porsches come off shipping trucks, brand new Carreras come off shipping trucks with a rod knock. I mean, <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> so it can happen, all right? So to say something's not gonna break would be a lie. Um, eventually, everything will break. Now this truck is tight, and it came from a great climate, and obviously the previous owner knew what to do, all right? Uh, what he did with the motor was genius. So exactly what everyone should do, all right? Um, he knew uh, what to do. So it should be fine, all right? And uh, it's a nice truck, it runs great. Um, I think that's about it. I'm gonna leave this out here for my brother to take photos of, and that'll do it, thank you.